We'll open this program with a discussion of the days of the Martin and Lewis partnership. I read that your understanding of the physical relationship and how it would work best with Dean Martin came from an organ grinder and a monkey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I also, I also, uh, that was a picture of my mind. That was a picture of my mind. He's the organ grinder, you're the monkey. Yeah. Or, or uh, the short and the tall guy when indeed Dean and I are both six feet tall. But I worked in a crouch because I knew what the comic had to be against the straight man. And we always looked like that. And people would see us in person or at the Cope and they were amazed that we were the same height. But that was just a house number, the monkey and the organ grinder. Because when I was writing and thinking about what we had to do, I had to diminish Jerry and put Dean there. And in everything that we did, we kept that. As a matter of fact, there was one point when I told Dean it would really be great if we put a quarter of an inch on his heels when we played the Copa. And that I, my Krauss would work better. We did it. It worked. And what we did was we used a minimal frame of material and what we did was just show an audience how much two guys could care about one another while they were having so much fun. That was the key. What's the matter? Ah! A point of order. Yes. Fix the what? Fix the pipe. Hold it for me, Mr. Martin, and I'll fix it. Come off and hold it. Hold it. Thank you very much. The vast majority was ad lib. But then a, a structure worked out, but a lot of room to maneuver? I would say there was 37, 37, 38 minutes of structured songs, material, and we went from there and would go an hour and 10, an hour and 20, an hour and 30. But the structure was no more than 35, 36 minutes. I like him. Let's tell him about the plan. But maybe he's a stool pigeon. Me a stool pigeon? I don't even like peanuts. Doesn't even like peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. I'll find out. Go ahead. Hey, you. You ever packed a G on your hip when you copped a heist? Did I? Wow. <laughs> Did you ever take it on a lamb and a shamus who had the croaker beside the crease? He has lived. I don't know where I am. Huh? In the early days, when you were working clubs mm -hmm. and trying to drum up an audience, there's an interesting story. I guess maybe it happened in Miami, of how Atlantic you... City. Atlantic City. Okay, yeah. by the beach. Right. You take it. I drown. Every afternoon at 2, That only works once, you know. No, no, no. If you move down the beach, you can drown three, four times a week. <laughs> And I would drown, and he would be pumping and pumping, and I would have water, holding water in my mouth. And he would be giving me artificial respiration. I would turn from on my stomach, Pfft. first show's at 8 o'clock, we're at the 500 Club, bang, we're out of there. So the crowd gathers to see the drowning man, and now all of them show up for the show. Well, most. Before you knew it, this was like the first week, before you knew it, there were, well, the first night we played to six people in a room that sat 250. By the third or fourth night, word to mouth was that these two guys do three hours at midnight. Well, you couldn't get near the club. The, the crowds were just constantly around the block. And it came from our nonsense. Then they finally put our name up on the tail of the plane, Martin and Lewis at the 500 Club. And I'd run down the beach yelling at the pilot, folks, see, that's it. I mean, it was nothing for me to run a mile and a half for as far as the plane went. I was the best public relations. Dean finally sat at the bench and said, come back, I'll meet you here, you run. I ran. The trademark of Martin and Lewis, in addition to the, the timing and the relationship between the suave guy and the, and the comedic guy, was that energy, that constant energy that bordered on chaos 
uh, at least from the audience's perspective. Yeah. You guys were in control of it, but it bordered on chaos. You come out on a 1952 telethon, not your telethon, but Hope and Crosby are doing a thing to right. raise money for the U.S. Olympic team. Mm -hmm. And the stuff really hits the fan, right? Well, Bing was frightened. He wasn't afraid of Dean. Dean ran out between Bob and Bing, and Bob said, where's the monkey, or whatever he called me, and I came from another side of the, the stage. It spooked Bing. Bing thought I would fool with this too. And I never spoke to Crosby after that. That he didn't know me well enough to know I would never do such a thing. I was so offended by it that that was 52. In the next eight years, I never talked to Crosby. Our dressing rooms were right adjacent to one another at Paramount. Did you reconcile eventually? Never. Never. He never took the time to find out what I was, that I would never do such a thing. I didn't have the time. There's just too many wonderful people in the world to spend time with. I didn't need that. How good a straight man was Martin? The best in the world. Best that ever lived. Oh, Jesus. I mean, he had, just as a comic is born funny, and you just don't learn that, men like Dean are born with a sense of timing and a sense of pace. He could split an atom with the turn that he'd make at the time that he'd make it. It was infinite. And he didn't have to work at it. All he had to do was show up. I used to tell everybody, if he shows up, we're a hit. And we were. And he showed up. Was there genuine affection oh, between absolutely. the two of you or just a, a good partnership? No. I loved him as I love him now. And he loved me the same way, but as a kid brother, and he was my hero. And that came across. People would come from the Copa and sit in Lindy's and say, I saw Martin and Lewis tonight, and someone would say, what do they do? Well, um, well you, you know, one sings and the other jumps around. They never could ever say what we did. Because you were talking about aesthetics and very, very, very deep emotional ties that we projected to an audience. People were watching two people in love have a wonderful time. Reflexes, right? Like, yeah, that's important, man. Oh, sure, now. We've got to see if you're all right.